school district order the 12th of December. Anybody from the public online? I don't see anybody. Next item will go to the uh, We have five sets of minutes. First, the minute of the RGB board meeting of November 14th. I'll move them. Second. Okay, any discussion on those minutes? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your hand. Aye. 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 Excuse me. I have a correction to make. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I, w I was present at the November 14th board meeting. He was present. Was that online? He was online. Okay, we'll add that. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, second, the heads of finance committee November 8th, 2020. No, it's okay. That was. Requested the old one first. Okay, two thousand twenty-one. I'll move. Second. Second. Any questions? Those. All in favor, raise your hand. Aye. 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 Okay. This is for the finance committee, November fourteenth, twenty twenty-two. So move. Second. Discussion on our correction. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Minutes from the Finance Committee of November 28th. Mm -hmm. so move. Second. Okay. Any comments, questions on those minutes of the 28th? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 We have one last set of minutes of the Education Facilities Committee of November 28th. So moved. Second. Okay. Discussion, questions, corrections? See none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now, payroll award 1018 and 1019. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, we've got a second on the payroll awards. Any questions on the awards? See none. All in favor? Aye. 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 And lastly, vendor boards. 10 20. Couple. Second. Questions on the vendor boards. See none. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Next, we should have the uh, cash flow revenue and expense provided by the treasurer. Every question can get back to uh, the committee report. First one, finance committee. Uh, Brandon, chairman of the finance. Yeah, uh, we met today uh, on um, the uh, 2024 budget. Uh, Brandon showed us some savings on the tuition uh, decreases, actually. Um, so looking for uh, approvals for a vote on the Budget for four thousand four thousand four million three hundred eighty-three thousand eight hundred thirty dollars, which is going to be a budget change of three point six nine percent. Which I I say I can't tell her enough. That's a phenomenal job that was done on this budget. So um, I'll turn it over to Rebecca. She wants to say anything or. Anybody's got any questions on that? So, do you want to? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Okay. Yep. So, what we'll do, I didn't know if we needed to wait till it was down in the action items. Oh, you should do it down there. Okay. Yeah, it's on the action items, so the action is good. But. I'm fine with doing it now if that's all right. Yes, yeah, no, okay. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the proposed FY24 budget. And then you want to do the tuition separately, right? Yes. Okay. Just and the presentations up on the screen. So this is for board members who were not part of the finance committee meetings, just so that you can see the full presentation. Um, 
This is for the FY 2024 budget. And then, of course, if there was any community members present or that will watch um, this recording on Cat TV. So uh, on the cover page, it shows the sending schools that we support here at Southwest Tech. Uh, and this is a presentation for the FY 2024 budget. On this screen, just kind of breaks down, it's informational about what we do. We have 14 daytime, uh, two or three year technical programs. We have several students that come back after they graduate and come back for a third year to gain additional professional competencies um, and have additional uh, certifications in different areas. So this, this is just a listing of the 14 daytime programs we offer. We offer 18 daytime pre-tech foundation classes, so sort of our intro classes to introduce 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. It's geared mostly for our 9th and 10th graders, but anyone is welcome to get an understanding of what our technical programs are about and to give them an idea of what that field, that um, field of study would be like. And then we offer 10 workforce certification courses through our adult ed program. And these are, again, listed here. And along with that, and this is all open to anyone, and anyone in the community, um, adults, high school students, we also offer at least, and I've lost my last count, 722 online workforce and adult ed training classes and that's in partnership with ed to go so they can take these online courses and gain certifications in different areas or just have this for a study um, that again is in partnership with ed to go and those are the links are on our website with the information for those programs so that's just a quick snapshot of what we offer for our students on the next slide it talks about the fy24 budget and there is an increase, as it was stated, some of the key factors of the increase. Obvious one, that we all live in this uh, community inflation, and that is causing an increased operating cost for necessary supplies for our CTE classes. Proposed increase in health insurance rates between 12 to 12.7 percent. The majority of our employees will have an increased rate of 12.7%. So we have to cover that increase. Negotiated contract increases for teachers. Uh, an ESP contract is up for renewal, so we're not sure what may take place with the ESP contract. We have the health insurance arbitration, the HRA and HSA as a first pay. That is mandatory. And again, that, that is out of our control for negotiations and the Vermont State Teachers OPEB payment, and that again, that will increase and that is mandatory. And the last, the, the only, actually all the items stated there, we really don't have any control over. Those are all things that have been negotiated, set, are contractual, are legislative. We can't change those dollar amounts. So those are fixed and we need to incorporate those into the budget. The next slide just kind of shows our budget history. And the bottom part of that slide shows kind of visually how we've tried to keep our budget and kind of recognize, you know, how it affects the taxpayers. So we've tried the best we can to keep it as close to or as minimal of an increase as possible. And you can see by that presentation, uh, there's not a huge increase in any one particular year. And there was a year where we actually managed to decrease um, from the previous year. The next slide is showing our budget, what we're asking for approval compared to FY23. You can see FY24's budget again, $4,383,830. It is a budget increase of 3.69%. The next slide is showing our FTEs and again our announced tuition to sending schools. 
is based on our six semester FTE average and our estimated six semester average for, that we will use for FY 2024's budget is 153.51. And just as a side note, two students basically enrolled in our program equals one FTE. And one FTE is 240 minutes in our day. So an FTE is what's used to calculate the budget and student enrollment of 240 minutes per day is one FTE. The next slide shows the proposed announced tuition, 24,470. You can see the dollar change from this year to next is only an increase of $472. It is a percent change of 1.97%. So again, what our announced tuition would be that we would announce and the sending schools will be told is only a 1.97% increase of our announced tuition. The next slide sort of breaks it down to a better picture. We have our announced tuition at the top of 24470 we receive direct payments from the state, um, the AOE, the General State Support Grant, which is the on behalf payment, and it's 87% of the base ed, and that's $10,876 per FTE. And then we also receive directly from the state the Supplemental Assistance Grant, which is 35% of the base ed amount that's determined by the state. Again, we don't determine those dollar amounts, we don't determine the base ed. That's determined at the state level in the Agency of Education in the state of Vermont. Um, the supplemental assistance is $4,375. That reduces the tuition per FTE for Vermont student when we bill the sending schools per student. The bill would be $9,219. Um, per FTE, that is actually a decrease from this year. So again, I just want to emphasize, we are actually decreasing what we will be invoicing our sending schools for the FY24 year, school year with this budget. It will be a decrease of $1,882. That means per student, not per FTE, but per student that enrolls in one of our programs for the full year, they will pay $4,610 for the sending school. That's what it would cost them for a student versus FTE. And that is a decrease, as you see there, of $940. So with this budget that I'm proposing and with this announced tuition that I'm proposing, the way it affects the sending schools after the state pays the on behalf actually ends up being a decrease uh, cost to them compared to FY23. So if we go to the next screen, I'm open for answering any questions, having any discussion, and I hope that after that, that the full board is ready to have motions to accept both and approve the budget as proposed. And I'm also hoping for a motion and a vote to approve the announced tuition as proposed. But at this point, I'm opening it up to any questions or discussions from the board or community. Any questions? We have a motion on the board. I'd like to approve the uh, 24 budget of $4,333,830. <laughs> 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 okay, all in favor of. Uh, Moving to budget 2021 budget, raise your hand. Aye. 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 Now we need a second motion to approve the announced tuition at 24,470. Second. Second. Any questions on this? Just want to say thank you to Rebecca for all our hard work on um, the creating the budget. Uh, for sure. Thank you very much. Yeah. All in favor, raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Education Facilities Committee. 
Uh, yes. Can you hear me okay? The yes. Yeah. Uh, so the education committee met on November twenty eighth and discussed um, uh, moving away from kind of the broad umbrella of electives and really focusing on um, proficiencies within the classroom. And, uh, so I just want to like thank the teachers for really um, stepping up and diving into the curriculum and highlighting the proficiencies that are learned and go hand in hand with um, with the with the curriculum that they're teaching. So um, this is the direction we feel like we're going to be moving in or we are moving in. And I think it's a positive direction. Thank you. Any questions? So, my, so uh, Lisa's here, our, our guidance coordinator, to talk briefly about what the changes are, um, the specific changes to the credits that we want to be offering to our students in three different programs. So, so our three different programs um, that we're hoping to um, carve out a little bit more of an embedded credit, a little bit more streamlined guideline as to how students can be using our credits towards graduation. Um, our culinary program has asked to add one embedded credit at the end of the two-year program. Um, I have proficiencies if people are interested, but based on the proficiencies, um, he has highlighted all of the math requirements over the two-year program. Um, it has very extensive um, book of um, information, if anyone is interested in seeing that. Um, our graphic arts teacher would like to add an embedded math as well. That has been approved by the AOE. That has not been approved by setting schools yet. And she has put together some information about that as well. And then um, we're also asking to add a half of a technology credit after the first year of the program for graphic arts. Um, when graphic arts was a one semester course, um, it could have been used as either one full art credit or half a technology credit. Um, now that it's, you know, Four semesters instead of one. Um, we're asking that a half a tech also be included in that um, into that credit as well instead of elective credits. And our video and television production program would like to add an embedded science that's already been approved by the AOE as well um, with write-ups. And I uh, would like to add one English credit. And um, based on proficiencies which I have here, um, all that data has been put together as well with the curriculum to um, support that English credit as well. So, the next item of food course credits and culinary graphic arts video and Um, There's two within graphic arts, two within video, yeah, and one in right. culinary. Yeah. We have a motion then to approve those credits. So, we we'll like to second. Second. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor of approving the credit for culinary graphic arts video, raise your hand. Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. And uh, again, for, for verification for the public and uh, Lucy Katz and Nissan. So now that our board has approved these additional credits, they will, they will move on uh, with the recommendation of the board to our sending schools for them to adopt the new credit structure. Uh, so we'll have to go to the education committee and full boards of all of our sending districts with the exception of those schools. <laughs> I'd like to thank you for all your hard work on this. I, I think it's a wonderful uh, contribution to education to combine this and to acknowledge that these courses do have math in them and do have uh, uh, critical thinking, do have all kinds of uh, uh, language arts embedded into it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, then, that's our first three. Our next item will be uh, policies. We have one, two, three, six different policies. We have the chairman of the policy committee. Yes. So, uh, today we're going to be discussing six different policies that were mentioned during last 
month full board meetings. Uh, first of which being 2200 C anti discrimination. <laughs> Discussion uh, revolved around uh, <laughs> policy committee create <laughs> to bring uh, the current VSBA updated policy to this board. <laughs> Essentially, that's including a few different. <laughs> Protections including gender identity and national origin, and I believe there were a couple more. All of this will mean that our policy for anti discrimination and protecting folks uh, from prejudice will be in line with state standards. Um, so I'd like to ask for a motion on this policy. Uh, just, just for the public's uh, information, I was on the uh, VSBA for like 12 years up in one place. And before they um, release any uh, policy, they always get a policy established. They send it to the legal uh, team. The legal team makes any corrections or improvements, and then it is approved by the VSB board. That distributed. So all of these policies coming from the BSBA have all been checked by legal counsel. And they're all out of money. Okay. okay, we have the first one, anti-discrimination. We have the motion and second. All in favor? Raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Next one, 503C attendance. I'm open. Oh. Yep, <laughs> sounds sound good. Thank you, Brad. I'll yeah. second. We got a second. Is there any, any change in discussion? Mind you. For so the rest of these uh, five policies here, uh, there aren't uh, really any changes. Um, although, for one of them, there's check contact info. Although, for most of them, it's just a matter of uh, updating them. So that way they're uh, they're checking good to go. So uh, we're ready to go. Okay, we have one and second on the attendance. Fifty thirty C. Yes. All those in favor? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Next one, fifty one forty C communicable diseases. Same as the last policy. Just updated with the COVID and all the other stuff. We're just updating it that way. Uh, uh, we're going through all of our policies to make sure that they're up to date. Um, just in case there are updated updates that are needed. Um, do I hear a motion? I will hold that. I will. Got a second. Any discussion on? I can get a little Okay, I'm sure the board did so, but uh, they had nothing in there about things like COVID-19 and stuff like that. Uh, thank you for getting that done. Okay, all in favor of motion? Aye. Aye. The fourth one, educational support. Question Educational support system. That's 5266C. Do I hear a motion? Motion from Fran. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. Any questions from anybody on that? Again, these were just updated. Don't make your change. All in favor, vote to raise your hand. Aye. 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 Next one, 4001 C, sexual harassment employee. Now, this harassment employees are students. Uh, I'm seeing an employee here. Um, oh, do I hear a motion for this policy? I'm open to that. Thank you. This one includes uh, terminology and actions uh, done by individuals. Okay, I'll favor this one. Okay, we need to ask for discussion first. 
Sorry. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the last one, board members' conflict of interest. 7205 Second. 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 And uh, I know it's disruptive to families and busting and everything else. I'd uh, rather have students here safe. You know, so thank you for understanding. Um, last time we met, last month, uh, we were starting our uh, five year DNAP review. I mentioned that to the board. Uh, the team was here for three days uh, Monday, Tuesday, well, two and a half days, Monday, Tuesday, half day, Wednesday, and spent quite a bit of time with our staff and all of our programs. Um, and I would say that it was a very successful visit. Uh, we received a lot of positive feedback on the progress which we've made so far in the last five years since they were here for the decennial review. Uh, I think they were very impressed. I, I know they were very impressed with our culture and climate. Uh, and they felt that uh, things were working very well. Uh, I don't have a written report. This just give a summary of what the chair and I talked about before he left. Um, and we expect a full report probably within two or three months. Um, it, is a, it is hundreds of pages of data, so it's a lot, it's a lot to, to mull over. Um, but things are, from their perspective, when I understand things are going well, we're very happy with the things we've committed, such as common planning uh, to our to our plan book, uh, our common our common uh, expectations of classrooms, like early work and bell ringers, uh, things like that. So a lot of things that we're trying to do in common across the center, even though that we have very different programs, uh, we, we need to do a lot of things in common, and that's one of the themes. Um, also, I would like to thank all the teachers and everyone who set up the eighth grade tour for last week. Um, it, it is something we have to do. It is very disruptive um, and you know, dragging hundreds and hundreds of eighth graders through here. Uh, the teachers talk the same talk for three days, you know, for hours at a time. So it's quite, it's quite a bit. Um, and it's, uh, but I want to thank everyone for that. It's a really important career tool that we do. That would be. We, we're still amazed when we hear a, a ninth, tenth grader, or eleventh grader say, "I didn't even know that was there." Well, we're trying to try to erase that, and so we've been doing eighth grade awards for many years, uh, and they pay off. And as you've seen our enrollment, our intro classes are almost always full, almost always full, uh, and program first year programs are the majority of them on the same track. So uh, they are very helpful and useful, but I know they're disruptive. Like today, eighth graders, no. And so um, in case students at least to know the buildings here, see the programs and whatnot. And it's not just MAE, it was other eighth graders, other schools, all other here. So um, thank you everyone who did that. Um, also, I, really, I do want to reiterate a thank you to Rebecca for her hard work on the budget. Uh, it's not often that we can present a budget that has reduced tuition in it. Uh, I don't know if we do that every year, but this year we are. So uh, thank you so much for all your hard work on that. It's very, very impressive. Um, and I also will update for you on the uh, flood and the assembly room. Uh, the, we're making good progress on that room now. The carpet's been replaced. Um, the equipment is being taken out of there that needs to be discarded or recycled. Um, so I, I suspect that probably February, I'm going I'm to say that we'll be back in there um, for our meeting. I would say January, but I'm, I'm not that confident yet. I'm going to say February. So um, now we'll continue to meet in here, which is nice. We've got a nice setup in culinary. Works out right. So. Um, and just so you folks know, um, last week, uh, two weeks ago, it was a year from when the flood happened. So, just to give you a, a little, a little reference on that. Uh, it's been a long, been a long time, uh, but we're, we're almost back in June. So, uh, yes, and also, uh, after we meet in January, we'll be starting our second semester. So, we're, we're wrapping up this first semester already. It seems impossible uh, that we're in the middle of December already. Uh, where time has gone to. Uh, but for those that are watching, uh, our, so our program students stay with us for the rest of the school year. Our schedule will change a little bit. Uh, but we'll get a new a new group of students in our intro class <coughs> for those ones that we offer. So those students don't stay with us for the year. Uh, and we'll be switching semester. Uh, so our schedule flip flops. And uh, so we see different different kids at different times. So it's a, like a whole start of a different school year again, which is always good. Uh, that's all I have for my report. 
I'm happy to take questions. I just want to be cognizant of folks' time on today. But happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Under the chair's report, it sounds like an echo. But again, I'd like to thank thank you for the job that you did on the budget. Uh, 3.69% increase in this age of 70 to 9% uh, increase in all over. It's a miracle that's happened, and uh, I almost can guarantee you that all the school districts will uh, challenge the stuff 3.69% will put on everybody. So much. Yeah, that's all I've got. Happy holidays. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.